All right, Shalom, another gem that's going to go back with another lesson, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Thanks, double honors, most definitely to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the one that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akims. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith for God, so people here for a bear. I was just sitting here thinking how magnificent. It's going to be when Lord Yahweh Shai pull up, what they're going to call Jesus. It's going to be, I mean, that's the only word that I could think of. I was trying to think of some other words, but magnificent, magnificent, extravagance. You know I'm saying like out of this world, you sit back waiting on Yahweh but Yahweh Shai to come crack those clouds, man. The Lord willing, so I guess, you know what I'm saying, get delivered pretty much, man. Lord willing, get delivered, man. I want, I want to read this right quick, man. And I'm going to hop right into it. I ain't even had this part of the lesson, but I'm going to read this right quick. Sitting back, Lord willing, waiting on salvation, man. Doing what we got to do according to the Bible. You know, so, so Lord Yahweh shall pull up, man. Let the rest of the Israelites get caught up in the fashions of this world and get destroyed. And the men of the Lord, Lord willing, I'm up that number. Just sit back waiting on Yahweh by Shemel Shai to come and crack those clouds. Once again, like I said before, it's going to be magnificent. You know, it's the only word that I can think of right about now, man. This is Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Man. And that's what I was thinking about. I just got off the jibby job. Some of us are still working, you know. We got jobs, you know what I'm saying, to help other brethren out that don't got jobs, you know. I mean, you pay your bills, but at the same time, if you got extra, look, give a lending hand. Do the spirit of you have about Shemir Shah, the scriptures tell us what? Well, give to a godly man. If you're gonna help somebody, know who you helping out, you know? And if he can't if he can't pay you back, which you're not looking for a brother to pay you back unless he get a little bit along. But as far as just helping a brother, if he can't help you back or if he can't get you back, you how about Shemir Shah gonna pay you back anyway, man? You know? That's how the Lord do. Salvation is near than what we believe. That's what I was pondering on. Few minutes ago, while the world is thinking about the beach, and you had one guy at my job talking about some, um, he hoped the coronavirus situation, um, get done away with by the time football season come. I'm looking at him like that's the only thing our people think about is sports. That's the last thing the Negroes, Latins, and Native Americans, but he was an Edomite. So, of course, I'm saying he was going to say something like that, but then you got Jake's thinking like that too, thinking carnally. When the scripture says salvation is near than when we believe, man, salvation is near. And Lord willing, if we are that number, look, man, we're going to get delivered. Have faith. Believe in your how about Shemir was shy. But I'm going to read this. This is, this is the scripture I was thinking about earlier. And I was just thinking about Lord Yahweh Shai cracking the clouds, man. You know? <laughs> Scaring the shit out of the majority of these people on the face of the earth. And it's going to be fearful. It's going to be scary. But at the same time, that's our only hope. You know, is that when Lord Yahweh Shai do crack the clouds, which he's going to come, he said he was. And we get delivered out of this hell hole called America. This is Revelation chapter 1. Verse 7, behold, which means to look. He cometh with clouds. You got people, he's coming on a cloud. A cloud, a.k.a. a chariot, man. And I get the precept for that. When people hear clouds, you know what I'm saying? They think of a, a regular cloud. No, it's talking about the chariots. But y'all get the precept for that. In Psalms, just a wonderful feeling. just a... It's a beautiful thing to be, man, we, we're comforted every day with these words, man. It's a beautiful thing. This is Psalm chapter 104, verse 3. Who led the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? So when, we, so when we go back to Revelation 1 and 7, he cometh with clouds, meaning he cometh with the chariots, the heavenly hosts. No, he cometh with multitude of angels, man. To render vengeance to this place called Babylon and certain other parts of the earth too. So when it says he coming with clouds, it's talking about the chariots, man. I'll read it again. Psalm chapter 104. It's going to be splendid. It's going to be marvelous. It's going to be spectacular, man. In any words that I, I can't even think of that you brothers can think of, it still can't compare how glorious and how marvelous it's going to be. Extravagant it's going to be. We're, we're just thinking with a carnal mind. How glorious it's going to be, but it far exceeds that, right? Psalms 104 and 3. Who led the beams of his chambers in the waters? 
who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. But the point of that scripture is what? The clouds are considered chariots, man. Sometimes you can look up, you think you're looking at a cloud, but it's a chariot. But they're eagerly called UFOs, man. We see them all the time. It's a beautiful thing. You're starting to see more and more chariot sightings than a little bit, man. Pretty much every day, brothers putting up chariot sightings, man. Videos of chariots just zooming past or either just coming. You know what I'm saying? So many of them, man. A fleet of them, man. That's how the Lord is going to come. We're going to get that, Lord willing. Let's so go back to Revelation. So salvation is near. And when we believe, so the hell with football season, basketball season, golf season. Hockey season, bowling season, all that, man. We're living in the season, aka the time of Yahweh Bashmi Awashai coming, man. The Heavenly Father sent His only begotten Son, who you equally call Jesus, man. That's the time we're living in. That's why the scripture says it's high time to awake out of sleep. For the elect, anyway. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7 Behold, He cometh with clouds, aka chariots. Who is the He that is talking about? Lord Yahweh Shai, who they equally call Jesus, right? And every eye shall see Him. Because pursuant to um, Ezra, the chair was so big, it looked like a mountain. It looked like he had gra engraved a mountain. Like he cut out um, a mountain and just hopped on top of it. You know, started riding it, man. It was that big, man. These are some, some exciting times. You, you never know what's going to happen the next second. You know, the, the Heavenly Father, you have a bunch of shot, got everybody in suspense. Well, they, they don't know what's getting ready to happen next, man. We don't know what's getting ready to happen next, but look, it's, it's, it's exciting, man. To see you how about Shemar shall put fear in these people. It says, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Now, now, now that's a reincarnation scripture right there, because we know that it ain't nobody. And this happened, Lord Yahweh shall got pierced. But they even call it Jesus once again, because the majority of our people don't know that, man. He got pierced over 2,000 years ago, right? So we know most definitely it ain't no 2,000-year-old men walking around the earth, you know, coughing and all that, period. You know, those men died. And then they came back and they died a couple more times and then they came back. And now they're here now, man, to receive judgment, right? It says, and they also, which pierced him. The Roman centurions, right? And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. When Lord Yahweh shall come back, these people are going to wail. Let's get that. I want to get that definition. Let's get that definition for the word wail. They will come back. It says all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Let's get that definition right quick. Bear with me. You know, a, little, a, little, a little lesson through the spirit, man. You know. Just think about how marvelous it's going to be. It says, um, and all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. The word, um, the word well is a noun. A prolonged high pitched cry of pain. You know? These people gonna know that wickedness that they was committing is is the that's the last second and that's the last day that they're gonna be able to ever commit wickedness. You know, especially you Israelites. Now, if they're wicked, you no know saying it's gonna continue to be wicked until they get put in that bomb fire after serving a thousand long drawn out years of slavery. The wicked gonna continue to be the wicked. That's what they was created to do. And B is the wicked. That's why we're gonna have to lay down that hammer. We're gonna have to punish them. Through the spirit of Yahweh, but Shemel Shai, when we get him in our kingdom, Lord Yahweh Shai's kingdom, matter of fact, the Lord willing will be joint heirs. It says, grief, anger, howl, yow, cry, lament. These people going to moan, they're going to scream when Lord Yahweh Shai pop up in that humongous chariot. Man. You know? That's why the scripture says, hot time. Give a cry of pain, grief, or anger. And look, the Rothschilds, the Gettys, the Bloombergs, the elite banking families, most definitely, they're going to um, be angry as I don't know what. Because they know that's the end of their rule, too. And Lord, you have a shot pop up on the scene. Whoever's ruling, no saying going to be ruling no more. The scripture tell you he had many crowns on his head. I mean, he took down all the kings of the earth, man. You know? And put them up on his foot, man. You know? Even so, our mind. That's a beautiful thing. The Lord going to come with them chariots. Let's get this right quick. Let's get this Psalm right quick. Psalm 68. It's just something just something wonderful to think about. At the end of the day, we're going through what we gotta go through. Brothers losing their jobs left and right, barely got a roof over their head, barely got food on the table, going through afflictions, suffering for righteousness' sake. 
but there's hope. Look, there's always hope. That's the thing about it. There's always hope. This is Psalm chapter 68, verse 17. The chariots of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, are 20,000. Even thousands of angels, even thousands of angels, man. Even thousands of angels, man. All kind of chariots are going to pop up, man. So it's going to block out the sun, man. It's going to be so many chariots that's going to block out the sun, man. It's going to be a beautiful sight to see. Abba Rats is I'm alive in that day. You know, to see it, to witness it, man. I got to read that again. Psalm chapter 68, verse 17. The chariots, a.k.a. what they even call UFOs, right? Of Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shek, because those are the vehicles. You know, you got people, you know what I'm saying? The majority of our people don't got faith in what the scriptures say anyway. You know. Yeah, if, if Lord Yahweh Shah wanted to just pop up on the scene, he could, but he coming back in style, man. Okay? That's Jake for you. They like to ride in style. Even thousands of angels. The Lord, Yahweh Bah Shem Yahweh Shah is among them. As in Sinai. In the holy place, man. And the scriptures say, you know what I'm saying? What I just read in Revelation, man, these people are gonna be shitting in their drawers, man. Excuse my rude language, my rude speech, but these people going to um, literally take a crap in their pants, man, when Lord Yahweh shall pop up on the scene. With thousands upon thousands upon thousands of angels, and, and, and they're going to be riding in chariots too. And as we said, you know what I'm saying, the chariot the Lord Yahweh shall was riding in was, look, was the size of a mountain, man. Look, look, he said it was the size of a mountain. Can, can you dig it? Can, can you dig it, man? Look, I'm, I'm going to see if I can get that right quick. You know. And he ain't coming back to talk. He ain't coming back to play. You know, none of that. He's coming back to render vengeance and anger with fury. Let's see. I got that. I, uh, I want to I hit some points right quick. I mean, I can go straight to the point. I can go straight to the point. Let's see.